All right, everybody, welcome to the Abundance to Give podcast. We are in cowboy style today and cowgirl style. I have my better half, Kate. I should say better half now because what's funny, I wouldn't say ironic, but funny is that the last time we had a podcast was in February of this year, which was the first time we ever met. And then fast forward here nine months later, I mean, I guess eight months later, we're uh, together as a couple. I know. What do you have to say about that? I, what do I have to say about that? Well, after that podcast, um, when you left, everyone in the office was like, that was a different podcast, Kate. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. What would you in what way? They said you don't usually laugh that much. <laughs> well, that's good. I know. So um yeah, there was some vibes going on in that room, that studio. I was I was holding back. Mm-hmm. I would I would probably agree with you. I do agree with you. It was an awesome podcast. Yeah, it was like two but hours. But we talked about I know. I mean, do you normally do podcasts for two hours? I mean, I can go I, So you're like not- will you go like Joe Rogan style? Three I, hours? I could. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. I can come up with lots of questions once I like get going. Okay. But I was really looking to find out a lot of things. Find out a lot you. of things. Okay. Yeah. Like like what? And you were dodging all my questions. So then I had to ask new questions. Um, what kind of questions? I don't think I was dodging questions. You were people you you can go back and watch the the episode. The whole thing. Okay. Yeah. And then you can tell me if he's dodging my questions. I think I was being tactful. No, that doesn't make for a good interview. <laughs> anyway, this is your podcast. Yeah. So welcome into the new studio that you helped design, by the way. I love it. Um, you know, we always say that when you're gonna connect with somebody or um get together with somebody. You, you know, everybody gets connected through that initial chemistry and whether it's physical or emotional connection. But um, I don't know that they spend enough time on core values and mm-hmm. alignment because those are the things that I learned a lot about. And then when you and I, obviously, we had the podcast and there was a connection physically and yeah. emotionally. But then I think it, for me, it ended up becoming so much deeper than that when I started to learn so much about you in your core values with, you know, faith and family and where you're going. So you're so funny. Why can't you look at me when you're telling me all that? What do you mean? You didn't even, you were like not looking at me. I'm like, uh, hello, I'm over here. Um, well, I just, I'm really big on eye contact. Clearly. (laughs) Um, no, I just, cause then I feel more connected to you and what you're saying. Okay. But, um, sometimes you do that. It's funny to me. Oh, you notice that, don't you? Yeah. Like when it's you're not by, it's, it's like not when you're because I'm trying to do that. Yeah. Or I think it's because maybe I that's how I think through what, what you're I'm, saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um sorry, so what was your question? Uh did you feel similar in core values? In terms oh yeah. Or I mean, I think that's where our alignment is probably deepest, mm-hmm. is kind of where we're at. Um how we see life and where we want to go if you know in terms yeah, of a couple because and... I think even before our podcast like the reason that the podcast happened was because of that because mm. I was following you you were following me and I mean I really liked what you talked about on on your podcast and then just in your you know short form content so that was like I already kind of knew. Some what did things you like about, about you. it? I'm curious. Well, I, I could tell being a dad was really important to you, mm. so that was probably number one. And then, um, just I mean, the podcast is called Abundance to Give. So mm. I mean, like that's you care about giving back, which is yeah. also important. And yeah, and just <clears throat> your overall vibe. I mean, you don't really know someone until you meet them in person. Obviously, you can portray a certain image online. Sure. Um but yeah, and Did you just get like the... personal development, like 
Well, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I've done a you too. I mean, we've done both a lot of that. So we aligned on that mm -hmm. uh, and stuff that you've gone through since your divorce and your family and your kids and everything you've gone through and that self-development for yourself. And then same thing I did since my last relationship, um, becoming just a better man as a mm -hmm. partner, better human and understanding some things that I had no idea about, about myself uh, and how I was almost self-sabotaging relationships. Yeah. Not realizing it. So. Yeah. Don't self-sabotage this one. <laughs> I won't. Well, now <laughs> I know what I know, you know, and through therapy and hypnosis and everything yeah. that I've done. Um, I mean, what do you, I mean, we're six, seven months, I call it seven months in. Uh -huh. um, how would you say, say things are going? I'd say things are going great. Okay. I mean, how would you say they're going? I think they're great as well. Yeah. You know, we're, we're learning so much about each other and continuing to. Um, how's the distance been? Okay. So I was actually having this discussion with a client couple of days ago and uh because he was long distance and his wife was like in another country oh my god yeah really? so oh yeah for i think over a year and um i mean he thought it was great because when all you have is communication it forces you to communicate really well um Very and true. so especially like in the beginning of a relationship if you are in the same city you're maybe in the beginning you're communicating, but then maybe it's more physical because it's new, exciting. And so then there's not as much uh, intentional communication time. In the time that you have, knowing that you only have maybe a day or two days or three days well, no, together. I, I think <clears throat> when you're not together, what do you have? You have the phone. That's right. It. Or FaceTime. So like that is all communication yeah and we've done a lot of it through that i mean right. you being in las vegas and san diego and as we say it's a bunny hot flight yes 38 minutes thing to say and just yeah. so everybody knows we are wearing cowboy and cowgirl gear because we're getting ready to go to a concert after this so we said what the heck let's just yeah. dress up and let it rock we're going to see jason aldean dustin lynch and a handful of others here in san diego and she literally just flew in for the day for yeah. the day 24 hour stint yeah so i like that gonna be so, fun spontaneous yeah um so we you wanted to talk about relationships and mm -hmm. kind of hot points and relationships and stuff yeah beyond ours okay. which maybe people get bored with so. well let's talk about some yeah some hot topics like should the guy pay for everything um everything sure let's go with that for now I think the guy should be the main provider in the family, mm -hmm. should pay for most things. Um, there should, I believe there should be some participation, even if it's minimal Yeah. from the woman. But it, listen, it depends on the dynamic of their relationship. If they have a conversation and the guy's like, no, listen, you are going to take care of the household 100% and run the family and run the kids and run, then awesome. I'll take care of all the financials. Cool. That's a discussion that has to be there and both people need to be in alignment with that. But if it's okay, well, no, you know, I'll be the main provider and the main breadwinner mm -hmm. and there'll be some on your end, even if it's minimal, but that way there's some dynamic there because what's attractive to me about someone I'm with is that they'll allow me to be the leader, be the man, be the main provider of the family, but that there's some participation, even if it's small okay so i think that i think they say that money is like the number one reason for is, like yeah because it creates stress right and then the fighting and then the the what really ends up happening is there's a kind of seesaw between the masculine and feminine comes out of whack well, that was what my that was going to be my next question right is because i think that that is where it can get confusing is because if you're not, it, it seems like there's two different ways that you go. It's like you're that traditional like family where, okay, the wife, it's kind of assumed 
I think in most cases, like, I don't think they really outline the expectations of the roles, but okay, you're taking care of the house, the kids, this, that, whatever. And then I'm providing financially. Um, but then in many relationships, marriages today, it's not all that way, right? Like it's usually the women are working. So then, then who does what? And I don't think people really, um, I don't think they set clear expectations. I think Uh, I would agree. And that's a problem. Um, I do not believe the woman should be the main provider in the family or that the woman should hustle, have to hustle to out earn Mm -hmm. her husband. Um, if it happens because, you know, give you a perfect dynamic. Let's say it was Giselle and Tom Brady. Okay. Well, that's a very rare situation where she's not necessarily having to full on hustle, but she out earns him. Mm. Right. Where where they're both making gazillions of dollars, but it just happens to be in her line of work. She's able to easily out earn him. Yeah. Um, so that's a different dynamic because that the masculine and feminine still stays in alignment because they're both doing well for themselves. It just happens that her profession has allowed her to, you know, do crazy things. Yeah. But we just came back from a conference with Patrick Bed David and you um, were on break while they had this woman come up to the mic Mm. and this exact topic came up and who would have believed that this woman would get up in front of 6,000 people and discuss that she was on the verge of trying to figure out, she was there at the conference trying to figure out whether she could stay with her husband or not. And what and was her the husband issue? was in the audience, yeah. which made it like super uncomfortable. He didn't get up. He didn't even raise his hand when they asked or anything like that. He didn't say his piece. I mean, it came like it was, what was the issue? When it came down, push to shove. She's the main breadwinner in the family. Mm. She's a real estate agent. She's a hustler. You know, and that is the dynamic that was created in that relationship for good or for bad. He takes care of the household and the kids and is like a mm. great stay at home bother. Incredible. Okay. But what's happened is now they're later in that marriage and she's wanting that not to be that way anymore. Mm-hmm. Where she wants to maybe take more of a step back and have him step up. Mm. And so it was very easy for people to say, well, like, like yeah, he should step up, grab his balls and be a man and be the provider and that should have never happened and all that stuff. True. But you don't know how the beginning of that relationship started or what their conversations were. Um, And then Patrick brought up a great point to her as everybody was trying to like hammer him and he wasn't even there to defend himself. Uh, He was, you know, kind of quietly in the audience. Uh, But Patrick said, Hey, miss, so you have been the breadwinner and that was your conversation at the beginning of your relationship. And that's how you guys agreed the dynamic was going to be. Yes. And she's like, yes. So 10, 15 years later, now you're wanting to step off that role and have him step up into that role. You know, that's not that easy to do. So and, and because of that, you've lost attraction, right? That masculine and feminine mm-hmm. has come out of balance. And now this attraction and love and passion that would be there because of that imbalance is like slowly dissipated, right? Where she's become not that attracted to the situation. Mm-hmm. And Patrick was like, listen, it's, you started off that way. And quite honestly, you were doomed from the get go. Yeah. Because it's really difficult, despite what anybody says, if you understand the psychology of how men and women process emotion, which I've learned a lot now, the importance of the masculine and feminine in any relationship, um and attachment styles and all of that stuff very difficult for that relationship long term to last if the man is not providing three things to the woman like at the core level she needs to be feel provided for protected and emotionally safe through emotional intimacy Mm -hmm. and if that's not there it's very difficult to keep the woman's attraction long term yeah. Would you agree I with agree. that? I agree. Yeah. And I think, so I saw this video uh, the other day. It was this guy. You look amazing, by the way. Uh, thank you. But <laughs> this guy was talking about how he gets up with the baby in the middle of the night to okay. do the feedings, right? Okay. And he's like, I get up and do the feedings every night because my wife carried the baby, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is the kind of thing. Like, I disagree with that entirely. Okay. I think that 
the woman needs to get up and feed the baby. That's literally like how we were designed to, I mean, we have the milk, right? And yeah, like I think that the man can do other things to help and support, but like, okay. I think that's the wrong message to send. Like uh, there's a lot of women that their husbands are working yep. and, and they expect them to do all these other things. And I don't think that those are tasks that they need to be doing. And I think that that could affect the attraction. Yeah. Um, hmm. A lot of women will probably hate that I said that, but I really disagree with, I, I think there's just <clears throat> so many things that we are like making excuses for hmm. and, oh, we need help and we need support. But then, but then we want the masculine well, man. Like, yeah. well, which is it? Um, you know? So I can touch on this a little bit because of my marriage. Um, so, you know, my ex-wife, we've talked about this. She's an incredible mother, great person. We just had our alignment of core values were not there. Mm -hmm. And what I was really looking for was someone like you, right, who is a great mother, is a great person, um, wants to be, I guess, the main person at home but also a go-getter in the sense that you have dreams and passions outside of the home that you want to go after, mm -hmm. right? And I think it would be a problem if we had this relationship and I said, great, sweetie, can you be the main breadwinner and be a boss at home? That'd probably be a problem. Yeah, well, that's been my life, yeah. <laughs> right, that'd be a problem because yeah. you'd be sitting there going, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I have to be you know, boss babe at work. And then I get to come home and be boss bitch at home. Like there's your attraction is going to drop mm -hmm. through the floor because that, that alignment's not there. So I did do some of the wake up at night with the baby. And so she did the majority then it sounds like if you're saying you did some, I mean, this I, guy I would was say, making I would it say sound honest, like he did all the If feedings. I'm being completely honest, when the babies were young, I did half. Now you did half. Hmm. You said some and now it's well, half. I, when you say, so, yeah, I did. I mean, we would split the nights. Oh, you would. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Like we would split the nights where I would stay up one night and we'd flip flop it the next night. And like, literally that's how wow. it okay. worked for the first, what, three months of the baby's life when they're waking up two, three times a night and yeah. we, we, we would breastfeed. But then when she would put milk in the bottle, so that way yeah. it was available right when she was asleep. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, to be, if I'm being fair, yeah, I, I woke up, slept right next to both Everly and Brody half the time, woke up with them half the yeah. time, put them to sleep half the time. And like she would sleep in the master bedroom. And then we had a separate bedroom where we kept the baby in the nursery and all that stuff. Mm. Um, and that's not a knock on her at all it, that was actually a choice yeah that's it just wasn't like you, a, you guys agreed it wasn't to. like she asked me or anything like that that was yeah. just kind of a choice thing that i wanted to be a helper mm. in that arena but then i was also going out well you were ten, going to work right? 10 hours a day yeah. running three companies yeah so you you know um and yeah i did lose some respect because i had asked her at a certain point in that i said listen you know, we talked about this at length before we ever got engaged, married, any of this. Like, this was not like a surprise. I told you how important it is that if you want to be the main person at home, fine. But I also want you to have dreams and aspirations and a some sort of a career. It could be even a work from home career. I don't even mm -hmm. care, right? Something where you're earning something to provide something to the family's financials even if it's minimal it's not the point it's the gesture it's interesting it's okay. the gesture behind it yeah so that was just something that was important to me because i want i've seen too many times even in watching my mom and dad right so this is kind of where i can go mm. back to to where if the mom literally every day it has nothing but two-year-olds throwing up on her and that is her entire ecosystem every day yeah and doesn't have maybe friends outside of the home and feels isolated in the home and doesn't have 
a passion in a career or something, even not even a career, just something passion outside of the home that gets her juiced every day to go out other than just feeding the baby, take care of the baby, take care of the house, take it right. That can really wear on um, a See, woman I think mentally. That's the problem, though. I think what you just said is the problem. Okay. Why? If a woman is able to stay home because her husband can financially provide, okay. what a blessing. Sure. Like, what an honor to be able to take care of your house, to be with your kids all day, to, you know, I mean, like, that should be the mindset. And I think that's where we're getting it wrong is like, because a lot of women aren't thinking that way. They're, oh my God, I'm exhausted. And don't get me wrong, it is exhausting. I, I agree with that too. Like it is like mentally exhausting to be with kids all day. Sure. So you should have something, right? Some sort of outlet. But I think we also need to have like more gratitude if you're in that situation because you're very well, yeah, lucky. And I, listen, and I look at a lot of women who are exactly similar to you where they have two kids, great mother, take care of the household, run your show. And, but you also have this inner excitement or passion of something you want to do outside of the home. And you're able to achieve that. I think the key is just not having the pressure as a woman to be the main provider, right? right? Meaning some, right? I'm and, and, just saying there's also, where is the respect and admiration for the woman that is pouring into her children and her household? That's my argument. I'm saying like I that think it's, is... It's totally there. You're saying it's being lost because well, everybody... Well, I'm saying that you, like kind of what you're saying is it's brings them down in a way if that's all that they're doing. Uh, if I'm saying I have seen it both in my mom and other women who if that is all that they their identity is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe before their identity was a little different. And then all of a sudden, and that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to yeah. be a mom. They wanted to stay at home. They want to raise the family. They wanted to do all of this. But what they don't realize is if that is all your identity and all your ecosystem and everything you're doing, and then you're just waiting till five, five thirty when your husband comes home. And then you're just, you know, throw up shit and everything or whatever it is is on you. <laughs> like you kind of want to like do the handoff, right? And you just see it to where the di even the dynamic of that relationship gets screwed because now the woman is borderline depression because she has this ecosystem and then the husband's come home from having all these things in the world to talk about, right? He's been around people, adults, and he's had conversations in business or personal or whatever it is, a dynamically out mm -hmm. in the world. And she's at home in a cocoon in this ecosystem of two-year-olds and one-year-olds. It can mentally F you up. Yeah, I and guess then I and just... then all of a sudden, it's really hard because you have a conversation at night, and she uh, wants to talk about throw up and kids and two year olds, and then you want to talk about stuff that maybe happened in your day, and that, that that's where the disconnect happens. I think it's really hard. Hmm. I think that's why I'm saying I believe the alternative to that a bit is a hybrid, where yes you are the main provider of the home and the household and the children. Awesome. Because that's where the feminine comes in. Mm -hmm. And the man is out there making a majority, if not 90 plus percent of the money and taking care of, you know, all of that financially for the family, vast majority of it. But it is exciting when a woman has the ability and a passion outside of the home, even if it's a home-based business, whatever, mm -hmm. something that is beyond identity is, a, is, is, is children. Okay. So I think that what I don't disagree with what you're saying, but what I'm saying is there should be more discussion around that role. And okay, that's what you described is one way, but like, what if it was, I went to a a workout class brought the kids, then we did this, and then we pl had a play date. And then we, you know, did this reading thing and like little, you know, Susie read for the first time or something, you know, like, it's exciting. That's an exciting conversation, right? Yeah. And the mom, if she's there and with the kids, like, that's great. Like, that's the best thing for the children to have yeah. the mom. So, yeah. and then she makes dinner, like, maybe she like looks up 
recipes because she has the time to do that. Maybe the house is like organized, organized, clean, clean. taken care of. Maybe when you get home from work, then she's like got dinner ready and she's excited to sit down and chat with you and the kids are happy and feel, you know, loved and supported Mm. because they're with the mom. Like, what about that story? It's an incredible story and a great one. But what I'm saying is that can happen in alignment with also having a passion too. It, sure, it can. Yeah. But I'm I'm just saying that I think there's too many men and women that are, it's a mindset thing, I think. Like instead of focusing on all the things that are, it's like, it's hard to be a parent. Yeah. Mm. But like, how about we focus on the good parts Like, I just remember being so exhausted when the girls were babies, but like, I was so happy that I had these children. So I like, didn't even care if I didn't sleep, Yeah, you know, because I was just felt so grateful. It was a blessing. That I, gratitude. yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I don't like the messaging of honestly, a lot of women that complain about it because I think that's wrong. Okay. Gotcha. I just think that they need to have a perspective shift. Yeah. Is, and be grateful and thankful. But then I as, think as for the men is. too, the women are expecting more of the man, even if they're the stay-at-home mom. Well, you, but that, once again, so that that's, that's, that balance, is where yeah. it the masculine and feminine gets out of whack because right the man's job is to lead, mm-hmm. and if that discussion's happening, and for whatever reason the man kind of caves and says, "Oh, okay, baby," like. I'll do all the stuff at the house and then I'll also go out in the world and make all the money. And so what's happening in that situation is men are taught and we are taught this from a young man age as we're going from boys to men, you know, happy wife, happy life. How many times have have men been told that? Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. You're going to be bullshit. Well, I think you should both be happy, no? Well, yes and no. Meaning, if that is the mentality where men are taught happy wife, happy life, then everything we're doing every day is to solve problems so that she's always happy and never discontent. But what you're doing dynamically by doing that, and these are the things I've learned, is you're setting in place a mentality that the emotional safety and the intimacy out of the relationship gets pulled out. Because now anytime she's unhappy or shares emotions of discontent, The man's rushing in to like take away that feeling when that's exactly what she needs. Mm. It's exactly what she needs because by having that feeling and then allowing her to express that feeling through conversation and emotional intimacy, she's connecting closer to you. And what men we do is we try and solve things. We solve problems. If my wife's unhappy, I solve it. If the kids are unhappy, I solve it. If there's any problem, I solve it. And what you're doing is actually eroding that masculine and feminine that's going on. And she's feeling emotionally, if you're shutting her down, if she's, if you're if, like, babe, like if you were sad or if you had a bad day mm-hmm. or if something was happening and you expressed that to me and I was like, oh gosh, she's unhappy. She's discontent. She's not feeling good. And I tried to come in and solve that mm-hmm. immediately from you and didn't allow you to feel that way. Yeah. What would you start to feel over time? If I, if like, if I, every single time you had a bad feeling or a bad day or a bad moment and you were sharing that with me and I immediately sh- kind of stopped you and tried to make it better and solve it for you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how it makes me feel. Yeah. That's because, I, well, I don't do it to you. Yeah. Cause I've recognized I, I, that's not a good thing. Yeah. That that actually doesn't allow you to feel emotionally connected and safe. I mean, have you noticed that with us so far? That I like when you want to talk yeah. about things, like I'm, I I allow you to kind of, yeah. Like my therapist say, allow her to go through the array of emotions. <laughs> okay, serious. so then what about no, this very, question? Very... What about men being vulnerable with the uh, woman? In what way? Anyway, maybe they're having a bad day. Yes, they should share it. Um, but you, it can't be like an everyday thing. Okay. Why do you think like men struggle with mental health more than women? Like the suicide rate for men is like way higher than women. Why do I think men struggle with mental health more than women? 
Um, there was a great quote or video I saw by Adam, I forget his last name. Oh, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Okay. I forget his last name too, but I like him. Adam. Yeah. And he says, every day a man wakes up and puts on a backpack full of rocks. Mm -hmm. And he goes out into the world to be a good man, to help provide for his family, help protect his family, help be the best version of himself. And, you know, every day the world's going to kick him in the nuts. And if he shared all of that depth and vulnerability every day with his spouse, which is like, they're like, oh, share it with me, baby. Like, I want you to be vulnerable with me. Yes, to a certain extent, to a certain extent. But if I shared every single thing that was going on emotionally every day with you, at some point, you're going to be like, this guy's a little bitch. <laughs> like you would. You'd yeah. be like, fuck, like all you do is talk about. All you do is complain. Right. Yeah. So yes, there's some mm -hmm. to a certain point. Okay. But, but a man does need to man the fuck up and deal with some of his emotions internally. Yes, you need to express them with your spouse or your partner, but to a certain extent. Because if you're doing it all the time at the level that, say, a woman may, mm -hmm. that seesaw of masculine and feminine is going to go completely the other way very quickly. And even though she's sitting there saying, yeah, sweetie, share these things, share yeah. your emotions, share, at some point, she's going to be like, like it's going to go the opposite direction. And that masculine and feminine is going to be in balance. She's going to begin to lose attraction very slightly in some way subconsciously. Mm -hmm. You, so, yeah. okay, that answers the question about the dynamic between in a relationship. But what about just men in general and them? Like I well, said, well, I think they struggle with mental health because they they aren't, you know, having these little intimate powwows. I mean, they don't have little girl clans and girl groups. You know, men don't. So, what do men need to well, do? Men, men don't typically have big female or um, female groups, big male groups of men that they're talking to on intimate levels about shit going on in their life. We just don't. We have a couple core group of dudes, guys, mm -hmm. and we'll share things with them. But at the same time, we're trying to maintain our, you know, masculine level to where we're not going to share like super vulnerable stuff um, unless it's like, a very, very, very close, intimate friend that you've like, you know, um, which is not easy to have. Like I have two guys in my life that I would share like really deep shit with. Whereas, Interesting. whereas women, you tend to have larger groups, right? Friend groups of women that you can share things with and bounce things off of. Yeah. And the women clans and I mean, you see it all the, the time. Clans. No meaning like, let's say a woman, a guy and a woman or a guy in a, um, a girl breakup. Okay. Mm -hmm. The girl's likely going to have an easier time moving on from that relationship typically because she's going to have a bigger cohort to kind of come in and wrap their arms around That's her. That's interesting. To I move, think men to, move on faster. Mo oh, I disagree. I think they do. Yeah. Because men will, if, if it was a tough breakup and let's say there was love between the two and now it's not there and they break up, Men will go through that breakup in solace and quiet and deal with it harder and it'll be harder to move on than it is for a woman who, if, especially if she's an attractive woman, she's going to get blown up in her DMs. And I mean, once it's out there that she's now single again, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, I'm just saying now you have the women or girls, her girlfriends wrapping their arms around her easy. She's going to be able to, you know, move through it faster. And then she's going to have more opportunities a lot faster than a man would typically. If she's a attractive female and has a good group of girlfriends, it's going to be much faster and easier for her to move through that than it would be for a guy. Okay. To, um, answer this question then. And then we probably have to wrap up, huh? So I saw this video yes. of this guy talking about um, successful men and how successful men cheat and basically okay. deal with it. This is the video, I gotta show you this. It was really interesting. Successful men cheap, just mm -hmm. deal with it. 
Yeah. And because okay. he's like, the, you can, uh, you know, if you're if you're in the top, what, 1% of men, okay. uh, then, you know, you can have any woman you want. And so you okay. will. Okay. And you'll have all of them. That's what this guy was saying. And you just okay. better deal with it. Like, that's just bad core values. Do you think that a lot of men are like that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but not, no, not, I wouldn't even say half, but uh, can a very successful man have just about any woman he wants? Yes. Mm -hmm. But what is the guy's core values? Like, where does he draw the line? I mean, is he able to keep his dick in his pants? Well, it sounds like that guy. It right. Wasn't, he because, wasn't, but yeah, it comes down to core values. Like, where do you stand on certain belief systems and faith and family? And because there's always going to be urges, there's mm -hmm. urges on both sides. It's always going to happen. But if you're giving in to that so easily, then that means. Well, and I would argue that a highly successful man or woman, if they don't have any self control, like, I feel like that's a component of being successful is having some self-control. It depends on your personality style. Meaning mm -hmm. if, if you're a, a D or an I personality, you're probably more susceptible to addictive personality things or being able to stray from being disciplined. If you're a more of a C type personality uh, or athlete based, then you know, you can just look at how somebody, are they organized, not organized? I mean, you look at their personality traits and that'll give you some ability to say, okay, is this a disciplined human so, being well, or not? That's okay. um, Because if they're, if they're more driver directors, D's or I's, socialites, you know, mm -hmm. out there, very, you know, out there in front of people. Yeah. They're going to be susceptible to more addictive personalities, which means likely they're less disciplined, but that would be me, but I would never have because like, you have strong core values. Like yeah. I'm not saying it's all. I'm not going to yeah. like paint a wand on everyone. I'm just saying you're more likely to be susceptible to addictive personality styles mm -hmm. and addictive things. So sure. then your core value systems have to be super strong yeah. to hold you in. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and that comes down to self development, self awareness. What do you want in your life? Because, yeah, I mean, there could be a portion of your life that you were off the rails. Mm -hmm. Well, you've made decisions. I'm not going to be that way anymore. So now you, you grow. Yeah. I mean, it happens to anybody. Yeah, that's interesting. But you're very, very more. I mean, certain personality styles are going to be more adept to lack of discipline, more addictive, but they can also be very successful, especially if they're in sales, if mm -hmm. they're DI, they're just always director, driver, socialites, boom, boom, go. And that's, they can be extremely successful. But that also means they could have personalities that are self destructive and yeah. very addictive. So they have to be very careful that they don't get out of alignment with core values. Otherwise, it can. Poof, Okay. Do you have any final questions for me on this relationship podcast? What do you feel is the number one reason, one or two, why relationships fail? I think that, well, people don't ask good questions, number one. I think that there is this like, People think, oh, well, you can't ask that. It's too soon. Like, don't, don't, don't ask that. Like, you know, on the first date, like, well, why not? I don't want to waste my time with this person. Yeah. That's how I feel Speaking about it. Of which, like, you and I got deep really quick. Well, yeah, because but I, but what I, am I, I, I love that. Not? Um, because by you asking me pretty detailed, in depth questions very early on, Number one, it got me comfortable, it kind of got me out of my shell mm. of like saying, OK, it's safe to like kind of talk deep about this stuff and be a bit vulnerable. Um, so you gave me that kind of open gate and safety to do that, uh, which I loved. And you didn't judge. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that like you did, like, at least I didn't feel like you I wasn't judged, which a lot no. of people that's why people won't do it or guys won't do it because they're in fear of that judgment that may be coming when they're trying to like present mm. here. Well, I think so. That's the problem. I think is that we're trying to present, we're trying to, sure. you know, protect ourselves. But like, I think that's wrong because there's this catch 22 where, and I, like I said, you want to be vulnerable. You want to share. It's important because that's how the, 
the woman, emotional intimacy. I talk about mm -hmm. emotional intimacy. That's how a woman is going to connect with the man. And then men connect physically, right? Yeah. Um, so there has to, that has to be there and be that. But if a man's just emotionally vomiting every day on his spouse, no, but that's going to be a problem saying, very like, quickly. Generally so. speaking, I don't care any relationship, whether it's a friendship of anybody. Like, we don't ask good questions to get to mm. know people. Like people do not know how, how to get to know someone on a yeah. deeper level. So then you can be married to someone for yeah. years and you don't know them. Yeah. I mean, you don't really know them. You think you do because everyone's <laughs> making assumptions about people. Do you think that we know each other pretty well so far? Yeah. But I think we have a lot to still get to know about each other, I agree. Yeah. you know, but yeah, like, but that was important to me there, from the beginning. Is there one question that mm -hmm. you have on your mind that you would like to ask me? One question. Not at this, not at the particular moment, but I'm still answering your other question, Okay. which was, so that's the first thing is people don't get to know each other and then they don't set expectations. So like if we were to, I mean, we've kind of done that a little bit um, so far where it's like, okay, we're going to see each other, you know, this frequently, we're going well, we to respond I mean, to each other in an appropriate like amount of time or whatever. Yeah. There were some boundaries set. We'll be, but I think like we had to, because I was, you know, I'd been in some sort of a distanced relationship, not that far, but, and you know, it was harder, but that's, I think it's because we didn't ask good questions probably and get on a deeper level sooner and really dive in. Yeah. Um, and so there was that distance emotionally, I think. Um, it, it, yeah. in kind of a weird way, cause it, it wasn't, but it, it kind of was. Um, but yeah, we dove deep pretty quick and we had to, and then we had to talk about things that you probably wouldn't talk about early on as to, you know, how would this work out in the future? Because mm -hmm. we are in different cities. And what would it look like? We yeah. had to, because I, how are you going to invest the energy and the time and everything that you're going to invest in someone if you don't even know what that could look like? Right. right. So I would argue that people need to do that no matter where they are, hmm. even if you live down the street, like, because <laughs> why am I going to invest time? Right. And then it's like, oh, we actually aren't aligned. Like, and you, I don't want to waste you say that, you're, you're talking time. about not just, Hey, how, how could the household situation look like? But just like, what are, it, what are your like, dreams, aspirations? Yeah, like, what are your professional and personal like, visions? Like, I don't want to like and, get yeah. into seeing you. And then to me, it's just, it's not, it just doesn't make sense. So, and yeah. then I think when, like, if we were to down the line, like be together all yeah. the time and be in the same house, we should, I think people should like write it out. Okay, this is what you're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Are we in agreement? Okay, cool. I like that. Because otherwise, it's like you're going to make assumptions and I'm yeah. going to make assumptions. That's just the way it is. Well, they, they, you know what you they call that? avoid that. You know what they call that? I think you told me. Covert contracts. Yeah, that's what it was. I learned that. Therapist, I mean, therapist that's taught just me that. natural, right? To like, yeah. oh, I have, I have an idea of what I think, you know, you should do and what I should do. Right. But I can't just assume or I can't think you know that, right? Right. And that's what people do. So I yeah. would want, I would want it very detailed. Yeah, I, I love. And right and now, listen, that's what I love about you is that we can talk about that stuff very openly and respectfully, and um, we're, we're like really in alignment with that because I couldn't agree more with you. Well, I mean, there, like should, there shouldn't be, any, there should someone, not be any ambiguity. If you hired someone to work for you. <laughs> W would you give them a, you know, an outline of their expectations? Yeah. Are you, do you like, want, do you want an outline of my expectations? Yes. Like I want to know what's <laughs> meeting the expectation. What's above. Wow. What is below. Okay. Cause otherwise, how do you know you don't? Listen, I love it. I just know. Think about how crazy that is though. Like, honestly, but we, it, it's no, not. no, no, we have a resume when we're going to go to a job. Yeah. We do not do that. Babe, when why we're are you thinking dating. so logically? No, I'm just saying like, what <laughs> I think that's the problem of what yeah. we should approach relationships the same way we do with like hiring people. Like kind of like a business. Yeah. I okay. think, I think there would be more marriages that lasted. You're probably right. You're probably right. So, um, 
So I wrote up a contract. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll sign it. Let me, let me read it over. Let me see what the terms are. See how it's going to look. Um, now I've got you speechless. You, you do, babe. Got me speechless. No, I had another question. I just like lost my train oh, of thought. Oh, sorry. Um, what, uh, what quality do you most look for in men and why? Think about one. Okay. Probably generosity. Hmm. If I have to pick one. Okay. Why? Um, because I feel like I'm very generous and that's important to me to like serve others. So I would want to be with someone that was like that too and not um, selfish. Okay. Do you think I'm selfish? No. My ex-wife thinks I'm selfish. You better cut these parts out <laughs> about her. Good God. <laughs> yes, you're cutting that out, by the way. Well, but does she think that because of your drive? Like, is it maybe just her, that's her interpretation of Definitely, you being so driven? Well, that's probably, I, I don't know if that's it. I don't know exactly why. That's probably part of it, I'm sure. Um yeah, it, yeah, I, 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 I'm actually baffled by that. I'm just sharing what yeah. she said to me, and I'm still kind of baffled by that because I'm like, do you know all the things that I? Well, but put okay. like, but in her if mind, you put it's yourself not. in her mind. Right. Where do you think it's coming from? She probably thinks I think of myself before I think of the kids. Okay. Which I don't know how that's possible, but. But why yeah. do you think she thinks that? Uh, in her mind. Because I, I mean, yeah. people create their own stories. Yeah, and that's right? I, and, and, I'm, so I, and I don't know other than um, maybe it has to do with the ambition side that, yeah, I'm going to, I got to like do things and then, yeah, the kids fit in. I mean, because people right? will say to me, like, what kind of mother are you? You're always on social media. It's like, okay, that's gotcha. the story you've created. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all, that's I, all your I can perception. say is be, maybe because of the ambition that I, I have to plan things, do things, do go here, talk whatever I got to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's part of building this, you know, world that I want to create, yeah. but it all comes back to benefiting the family and the kids right. and everything like that. But yes, there has priorities that has to happen with that. And it's not putting one before the other. It's just both have to coexist. Yeah. And I think that's just like going back to expectations, you know, outlining that, like I find that to be attractive, you know, cause in my relationship, or in my marriage, it, when you were at home, it's like no phones, like, or no working, not no phones, but like, don't be working. Gotcha. And, but I'm like, I'm, I need to work because, you know, I mean, I was a real estate agent, like you answer the phone. Right. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately um, you're on, me, you're on a lot like, more. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. like attractive because you're getting things done. And sure. then for him, like I would be fine if he did that too. Sure. So well, I think just, again, it's just that's not misalignment of core values. Right. Right. So yeah, that's yeah. misalignment of core values. Everyone, which is why it goes back to great mother, great person. Just we had our alignment of core values were not in alignment of where right. we were at, where we wanted to go, and what it would take to get there. And so you just have yeah, to accept, you just have to just accept that. Yeah, people just change, like right. you know, uh, and if you're not changing together. Yeah. That's when you're problem. growing, you got to grow together. And, and, you know, that's why I love how, you know, a Patrick Bed David or all these other people that I see who bring their family along mm -hmm. for the journey. Cause I'd never thought about it like that in growing businesses and empires and all the stuff you're trying to do. My thought was always, Hey, you go do it. And then they get to reap the rewards, mm. but it's almost separate in a way Yeah, I where like I, now I've totally changed my mind on that. I'm like, no, like you bring your family, you bring your wife, you bring your kids, you bring everybody along for the journey because then they're even more vested in it. Yeah. Then they even see how much harder you're working to make it happen. Right. And then they're emotionally and physically vested into this thing and they get to enjoy it and you get to enjoy it together. Yeah. And when you include yeah. someone in on your vision, then. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 up until probably five years ago, I looked at it completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm going to go just make it happen yeah. and then I'll bring it home and we right. get to enjoy it. No, it's actually the other way around. Mm -hmm. You actually bring everybody into it and you do it together in yeah. a way. 
No, no I yeah. like that. Yeah. And that was a, a real shift that I made about five years ago. So I think it's a good one. All right. I want the kids to be involved. In yeah. Everything. Why not bring them along for the ride and have fun and yeah. do travel? It's a business trip, whatever. Well, if, and if you can, they can learn and develop too in yeah, that way. And they'll see it. And they'll, so, yeah, and you do it together as a family. I think that that's awesome. Yeah. So. All right. So, let's all right, go everybody, we are world. signing off. We're going to a concert. <laughs> but uh, until next time, how can people find you, babe? At Kate Sells Creator. Uh, they can find me there on Instagram. That's my main um, platform. Okay. So, peace out, everybody. Bye.